Using this simple model, let's try and understand how Boeing's new automatic flight system really works and what might be some of its problems. Until the final report is published, none of us really know what happened. So what we're discussing today is pure speculation. But I'd like to thank YouTube viewers for their comments and some excellent journalism by the Seattle Times. Going against a long Boeing tradition of giving the pilot complete control of the aircraft, the 737 MAX new automatic flight system was designed to act in the background without pilot input. It was needed because the MAX's engines were much larger and had to be placed further forward on the wing, changing the airframe's aerodynamic lift. This new Boeing flight control system was designed to activate automatically, and they hoped it would make the plane feel the same to a pilot of older model 737s. The original Boeing design provided to the FAA specified a limit of 0.6 degrees, producing no more than a 5 degree nose down movement. Only after the Lion Air crash did Boeing provide airlines with full details of the MCAS system. Boeing's bulletin to the airline stated that the limit of the MCAS system was 2.5 degrees. That number was totally new to the FAA certification team, who'd only seen 0.6 degrees in the original safety assessment. The high limit meant that each time the MCAS was triggered, it caused a much greater tail and hence nose down movement. It appears every time the pilots of the Lion Air flight moved their control columns to pull the nose back up, the MCAS system kicked in again and allowed an extra 2.5 degrees of movement. So once the pilots had pulled back their stick a couple of times, the tail was at its full stop. The black box data from Lion Air shows that readings from the two angle of attack sensors differed by some 20 degrees. This discrepancy was ignored by the MCAS system, as it only required a reading from one of the angle of attack sensors. Since MCAS worked in the background, Boeing decided that 737 pilots needed no extra training on the system. According to the Seattle Times, it was not even mentioned in Boeing flight manuals. This allowed the new jet to earn a common type rating with existing 737s, allowing airlines to minimize training of pilots moving to the MAX aircraft. An American airline pilot, part of the Allied Pilots Association, said his training on moving from the old 737NG model to the new 737 MAX consisted of little more than one hour session on his iPad, with no simulator training. Minimizing this transition training was an important cost saving for Boeing's airline customers. As a sale pitch, Boeing said, as you build your 737 MAX fleet, millions of dollars will be saved because of its commonality with your older 737s. And remember, the truth is out there.